What's up everyone, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we are going to take a look at adding some more functionality to our blogging application with Rails 6. This is part three of the series. If you wanna check out the series from the beginning, I'll link to the playlist down in the description and you can also find that over on our website, techmaker.tv. If you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. With all of that said, let's get started. So I've basically got a couple of things that I wanna fix. And the first thing is when we go into any of our posts and we click on something to edit it um, and we add some text here. I don't wanna delete it, I wanna save it. If we save it, it doesn't actually do anything. Now, I did make a couple of changes off camera just playing with this, and what it was doing originally was redirecting and landing me on the top of the screen, and now it's just doing nothing. In any case, I wanna go ahead and just build out the correct version of this now uh, so that it works properly after we save it. So what, we'll, what we want to happen is when we save, we want it to essentially turn back into the regular text that you get uh, when you click Cancel. So let's see how we can get that going. So to do that, let's open up our post show page. Maybe it's not post show, what is it? It's, where am I, edit. That's right, we got rid of the show page. Just refreshing my memory. We've got a few different series going on at the same time right now. So I don't always remember every little thing that I did. So where are we? We've got the, uh, form with model post element and then we've got this rich text area and then right here is where we have our paragraph content so what I want to do is we have the data ID right here we have a class element item and I guess I could just add like a like an ID equals uh, element and then give it the element ID here, like this. I know I could look it up by the data ID, but for some reason I don't love that. Maybe it's just because I'm less familiar with it. Um, so we'll look up the element here, and then we'll traverse down and we will add the dnone class back to the paragraph and, and remove it from here. Okay, so let's see about how we can get that going. So what we need to do is actually create an update.js. So if you look at the form that's being submitted here, um, what we should actually do is say form with model and then say local true, which makes this a remote call, I believe. And essentially what that means is that that's gonna potentially trigger a JavaScript response from the server. So to get that working, let's open up our elements controller. So I don't actually think we need to do anything in here. And I think this is why this is not uh, reloading the page because I had commented out the redirect apparently. So what we need to do, because we're in our elements controller inside of the authors module, we need to create a new elements folder because there currently is one inside of our authors folder. So we'll have elements here. And then inside of there, I'll create a new file, update.js.erb. And I just wanted to say alert here, just to make sure this is working. So let's refresh over here, and let's just make some changes to one of these, and click save. And we get update is missing. Maybe I did that backwards, because it's saying format, HTML, let me try to remove the local true. Maybe I'm misunderstanding that somehow. Let's see, so if we refresh and save. Okay, so now it's working. So I need to do some reading on the nature of local true, I suppose. Um, maybe that's uh, doing the opposite of what I think. Um, in any case, so now it works. So now we can actually make this do something. So to make this do something, let's go up to our application JS. Where was that? So in here, we have uh, some code already set up where we are doing what we want to do effectively. So what we want to do is essentially trigger the cancel behavior. Um, so what I'm going to do is 
copy this we won't actually do much with like copying and pasting here because it's going to be quite different um, but this essentially uh, gets us kind of in the direction we want to go so we have in our elements controller we have an at element so that lets us find our uh, or that gives us access to the element object so we can use that to find the um, the div that we have right uh, what was that um, where are we so we have a list item actually ID element so on and so forth we could probably make our lives a little bit easier if we just put that straight up on the paragraph so we don't have to do any sort of element traversal so if we want to basically say element is this thing and then previous element sibling so what what do we need to put this on to make this work so we need to put this on the form is that right yes I think so so paragraph form so let's actually cut this and move it I'm all for making things easier instead of having to do extra work here so we'll say element dash element dot ID dash form and then over in our update JS um, we can actually just say uh, document get element by ID and then that's going to be element dash at element dot ID dash form and then it's exactly the same as before element class list add d none and then jump to the previous sibling and remove the d none okay so let's actually give this a shot so let's just refresh the page here and um, let's save it and you can see it just pops back pops back but it actually doesn't update the content which is kind of funky so that doesn't actually work for us we needed to update the content so let's try to do that in the same file so I think what we can do here is actually we can keep working on this previous element sibling so if we copy this paste it below instead of working on the class list we should be able to say inner HTML equals and then we want to set it equal to something so let's say HTML just above that and say let HTML equal um, we need to put it in quotes and then we'll say at element dot content then I think we need to say dot body dot h and then HTML safe like this so if that's a little bit confusing um, you can throw a binding dot pry or something in here and play around with what's exactly inside of element but let's give this a try and see if this works okay so we've got this refreshed and let's see well that's kind of interesting so it did work but now our HTML is sort of screwed up and how it's displaying so that's really weird so there's something going on with with action text here and how it's handling that um, so we need to, I think we can probably resolve that by, let's do a quick inspection here. So if we cancel out of that, what is this tag? So right here, it's just got a div strong. And then down here, it's actually got an H1 tag. So that's kind of strange. So what happens if I, maybe that's because that's actually, uh, let's refresh here. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. So if I inspect this now, what's in here? Why is that not working? Oh, it's because I'm inside of the editor. Here we go. If I inspect that, we have an H1 tag. Okay. Now if we save one of these things, it's an H1 tag. So I guess we can probably resolve this by actually just applying some specific styles. I guess it's possible that, um, so let's try it. Let me try this. So let's go back to our code over here. But really quick, I, I noticed something. I just want to see if, I, if I'm right about it. So if I open this up and open this up, was this one working here? 
So the first one's not working for some reason. Identifier element has already been declared. Um, I'm just gonna do that. Let's try that again. So we'll save that and then save that. Seems like that works. Okay, all right, so the last thing I wanna do here um, is fix these stylings. So I wanna basically make this so that an H1 has the right size inside of there. I think what's happening is after it reloads, it's not putting this div class tricks content. You know what, actually, instead of doing what I was about to do, let's do this. Let's say div class equals tricks content like that and then div and let's try this. Hopefully this actually works because that would be a lot uh, cleaner than what I was getting ready to do. Again, oh nice, okay so that works how we want. And it looks like the forms just keep on working. Okay, cool. So I need to brush up on some ES6. Uh, maybe, I wonder if this is supposed to be const here. That kind of doesn't make any sense to me personally if that does work. If it doesn't work, I'm not sure what you're supposed to use because I, again, don't know this stuff as well as I should. So no, that does not... Well, hold on a minute. I just had something clicked off. There we go. Identifier element has already been declared. So screw it. I'm going to go with the ver for now because that's what I know and it works. So we'll keep that going on. Um, but anyway, so this video got a little longer than I had thought it was going to. Um, but this kind of is working better now. Um, so now you can essentially edit text in place here save it and it's not going to jump around too much on the screen. We've got our drag and drop that's still working. We can refresh and everything's still saving. So it's looking pretty good. I've got one more thing or maybe a few more small things to do on here. Uh, maybe in one more episode and then we'll move on to working on uh, the front end where people can actually read blog posts. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching up to this point if you're still with me. Um, and uh, Leave a comment below if you've got any questions or anything you'd like to see me build. Um, but anyway, I will talk to you in the next episode. Talk to you soon.